Yeah, uh, we really appreciate Marcus and, and all the things he did while he was here. Uh, personally, professionally, great man. Um, we've had great communication w w with both he and, and his agent, Ryan Tolner, throughout the process. And um, we just believe we're doing what's best for the team at the time. But appreciate him and what he did when he was here. Well, we're going to add to the position, and we've been really clear with um, how we feel about Desmond Ritter and, and, and what he's done to this point in his career. He's, his makeup and, and just the way he, he's handled every role that he's been in and what he did over the last four games of the season. He dealt with adversity. He, he got off the mat. He kept fighting. So Desmond's done some good things, um, and, and, and we know he's going to continue to improve this offseason, and yet we're going to add to the position. Um, whether it's free agency, the draft, or both. Um, we've talked about the quarterback position and how we want to make sure we continue to add to that position and we want to keep bringing players in. So um, really excited about Desmond, and yet we're going to add to the position. No, no updates right now, and, and, and we're going to – we're working hard um, on, on, with, with some of those players, and some of them we're going to be able to bring back and, and, and get extensions done. Some will happen soon. Some will take a little bit of time. Some we won't um, be able to bring back. And, and, and we'll, we set parameters for ourselves, and we have to stay within those and have discipline, whether you're talking about players outside our building or inside our building. So no updates, um, but we're working through that. We wouldn't do that. We wouldn't make any announcements like that, um, and or we wouldn't. We're not in the business of anointing players. But again, really excited about the things he's done. But we're going to add to the position. I, I wouldn't say that. We're never going to put ourselves in a corner. We're always going to leave every door open. Um, so again, draft, free agency whether it's the eighth pick or whether it's at some other point in the draft, um, we could definitely bring in a quarterback. So we, we don't want to box ourselves in and, and say something we're not going to do. Uh, it could be both. It could be both. We, we, we want to bring in good players. So we could bring in, we could bring in a veteran. Um, we could bring in a guy with experience. We could bring in a guy with no experience. Um, we, we want to add to the room. Yeah, we want to bring in, again, we're not going to box ourselves in and say we just want specific things. We do have an identity, and we believe we do have a, a foundation. We've seen some good things in the building. The most thing, the thing that we really want to focus on when we're bringing players in is making sure we're adding to the culture and because we have a really strong culture, and we do things a certain way. We have an identity, so we want to have cohesiveness with that. So we want to make sure we're bringing in more so than skill sets the right types of players. Well, I, I, I would say it's a good question, and um, we, we, clearly we have a lot of cap space, and clearly we have a lot of flexibility. That was a part of the plan. This is the phase we're in, but we, we have to be cautious because we're not trying to get instant credibility or win a press conference. Or um, we want to make sure that that we're bringing in the right types of players for our building. And, and that's going to – we have a lot of work to do. When you have a lot of cap space, there's a reason you have a lot of cap space. That means you have a lot of work to do. We have to add to every position, every phase. So we just want to make sure we have the right discipline again, not just outside the building but inside the building as well, and we're doing the right things. We have to set parameters because if we don't, then we could get ourselves in a bind. So, so yeah, we, we need to add a lot, and um, we just want to make sure we go through the process in the right way and focus on the right kind of people. We have to focus on uh, our, our makeup and, 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 and not, not compromise that at all.
because yeah, it's just uh, I think it's I think it's who they are because that's what's really going to set that ceiling who they really are and that's why you know we're here at the combine and every exposure matters we get to meet with 45 players in a in 20 minutes a player and it's speed dating but that's an important part of it when these players play in the All Star games that's an important part of it when we go for individual workouts pro days all these things it all matters. It all matters, and and so with with quarterbacks or with any position, it's about who they are as individuals. That's what they all have talent, and they all have good skill sets. But once they get in the NFL, there's a lot of other external pressures and a lot of things these young men have to deal with. So will they be able to handle that and get the most of of themselves on the field? They're going to deal with adversity. How are they going to handle that? And so I think it's you have to hit on the makeup and make sure you're bringing in the right types of in individuals with the right intangibles. Everything, everything matters, and that's why we, again, some people might not value the combine as much, but, man, we want to be here, and we want to be here as much as we can and get full advantage of it because everything matters. Every, every, every moment you can be around these players and get around them or get around people that know them, everything matters. So you, you want to get as much exposure as you can and take advantage of every touch point. Well, I think it's all important. I think it's all important. The most important thing I would say are the meetings. If you say, what's the most important thing about the combine? It's the meetings. It's the medical that we get. Obviously, our doctors and trainers are here. We get all the medical information. The time we get to spend with the players, that's important. But I think the workouts are too. You, you, some players choose not to work out, and that's their prerogative. But you love for guys to get out there under the lights and go out there and compete. And we look at all the analytics and all the data, and you can it's apples to apples when you can compare it to – 10 years ago what someone did at the same position and then we can look at the trends and look at what's most important at each position we can do studies so I think everything's important if you'd say what's the most important thing I would say the meetings man he's a good player you always need multiple at that position you know you're never gonna I think the having one running back just carry the ball um, all the time. I think that's kind of rare and, and, and unique for somebody. You need to have multiple running backs to preserve their career and take care of them. But, man, we love Tyler. We love the work that he put in. He's such a smart, versatile player. You, you know, he, he's a guy that can not just first and second down, but third down protection. He's smart. He can catch the ball. He can go play special teams on fourth down. And so we love Tyler, but it's another position that we have to always add to. Yeah, it's there's some good players from from the Georgia Bulldogs here, but there's also a lot of good players from Georgia here, and that's something we lose sight of. We actually on our magnets on whether it's a free agent board or um, um, a college draft board, we put a peach on there if they're from Georgia, because that's something t sometimes people lose sight of. That there's a lot of players that grew up in this area that might have chose to go to another school. Um, there's a lot of Georgia natives that are really talented. So, yeah, the team, Georgia's doing really well. They have some really good prospects here that we're excited about. But we're also excited about a lot of Georgia natives. Yeah, good question because that's a starter. Now, if you look at you're in you're in your sub 75 to 80 percent of the time, you're going to be in that sub package, and so that position, that whatever you call it, nickel star, third safety, third corner, that's a that's a starting position, and it's a tough position because you obviously have to be really smart because you have to do a lot of different things. You got to play the run, you got to pressure. There's so many different things that you need to do, but uh, that's a that's a critical position, critical position. In, uh, in pass rushers, well, it, it's it, when we talk about pass rush, it's it's not just about you know the defensive line or the the D tackles or the defensive ends. You want to add everywhere because if it doesn't matter how quick you're getting to the quarterback, if the coverage not isn't good, 
then it doesn't matter. They can get rid of the ball quick, and so you have to make sure you build up your defense and improve your defense. And in pass rushers, it doesn't matter how you get to the quarterback. It can be with power. It can be with quickness. There's different ways to do it. So you want versatile players, but you have to make sure you're improving your whole defense and, and you're not just focusing on one area because it, it, it's a total picture. So what we do, we have February meetings, and that's just the scouts. So that's Kyle Smith and the scouts going through and setting the board. We have an excellent scouting staff that has done a really good job through the season, and they've set the board based off the information they have now. And that's what's, again, so important about this part of the process because now this is the coach's first exposure. So we, ha we get to have 45 formal interviews, and then we have a lot of informal interviews, and the coaches get to, we have all the information from the scouts, now they get to get in front of them. And, and then so we're going to continue to go through, we'll have the pro days, we'll have the private visit, private workouts, and we'll continue to go through it. And then we get to April, and it's going to change because we have more information. So it, it, it's a, we're in a critical part of the process right now. We do. We set the board, and that's the fun part because you're setting it just based off the film and what you got from the school. So that's really cool. Now we get through the rest of the process and get the coaches involved, and then we make the adjustments. Yeah, it's really fun. And, and, and Nielsen, when, when I think about a guy like him, I think about what we have in our culture and our types of coaches, and it's, it's all about development and competitiveness. That's what we always talk about our culture, development and competitiveness, and that's who Ryan Nielsen is. He's the, the same things that we preach, the same things that we've been talking about for the last two years, those are the things he's all about. And you'll see him on the practice field. That's his favorite part. He loves to get out there and work the guys, and, and, and he loves for the guys to go out and compete. And it doesn't matter how you got there. It, it, it doesn't matter if you're a top draft pick, a high paid free agent, or if you're an undrafted guy, it doesn't matter how you got there. If you're willing to come in and put in the work every day, then you're going to have an opportunity. And so love Ryan. He's what we're all about. And um, we're going to definitely have a lot of competition. We're going to definitely develop players here. Talking about in the draft. Well, we're right in the midst of that right now, so I wouldn't talk about a specific. But, man, you can find players everywhere. We always talk about it. There's going to be a really good player at eight, or whether we move up or move down, we're going to get a good player in the first round. And then throughout the draft, we have an excellent staff that we're going to find those players. Every year, we get through the draft. There's guys that didn't even get signed as an undrafted free agent. They show up at a rookie camp and make a team. So we're going to turn over every stone. Um, again, we have an excellent staff, and we're going to challenge ourselves to find players at every level. Nice jacket. <laughs> oh, that, that's a really – I appreciate that question because we really value the Senior Bowl. We have 20 players on our roster right now uh, from the Senior Bowl, and 11 of those players are from the last – two draft classes. So um, Jim Nagy and that staff, they do a really good job bringing in good players. The, the process is always really smooth, and they give really good access to the scouts and the coaches. So really valuable um, experience for us. So um, we, we appreciate it. Thank you. Well, it's, it's another good question. Um, and we really have to eliminate the noise. You know, we, we have to, we always talk about focusing on the process and eliminating the noise because there is, there's so much stuff out there right now. There's a lot of different information out there. We have to focus on the process and focus on the things that are most important. And it's not always easy because there is a lot of information. But that's why, again, things like this, things like the pro days, things like the visits, we really focus on those areas and those are really important for us. Yeah, at, at every position. We go through and we do studies every year, and we look at the trends of what's most important, whether we're talking about a specific measurable, a specific statistic, but that's ever-changing, ever-evolving. It's something we want to constantly look at. As much information as we can get, we want to get it, and then we just need to decipher it and figure out what's most important. Thank you.